All right, we are back with another Thursday news. Uh, this is the second one for the day. I've been kind of doing two of them lately because uh, there's been so much news in, but we have a ton to get through, so I'm going to go through it really fast. Um, first one up, we got a woman sues Toyota after allegedly prepaid car service plan fraud. Uh, so we could dive into this if you want to, if you want to pull it up and look at all the exact details. But uh, she basically got the Toyota Care program in here uh, that was basically $1,900 in maintenance expenses. Uh, yet the plan was priced to her at $1,025 uh, and was integrated into her loan. So she kind of jumped in and was all excited, but they skipped four services on her. Uh, they skipped the 20, 25, 40, and 55. So she did not get the work that was promised to her. Uh, again, Toyota has been doing, you know, we've, we've been seeing a lot of Toyota screwing over customers. Uh, so we don't know if this is the case, but it says right here, RAV4 owner claims she was promised $1,900 worth of work for a vehicle, but only received $800 dollars worth of work and she paid a thousand twenty five for that up front so um but interesting like i said we're starting to see a lot more of this stuff toyota was just sued for 60 million dollars for screwing over their customers with all of the uh you know through their financial division by not letting them be able to opt out of services or cancel any prepaid stuff or i mean any plans that they get that they no longer need they made it really tough moving on from there uh kia recalls four hundred twenty seven thousand tell you rides for a rollaway risk basically there is a problem in the transmission uh the gauge or the shaft is not completely engaging and therefore it can wear out the uh uh, the splines on the shaft and it can cause it to just take off on its own if you're parked on a hill things like that so if you own a Kia Telluride <coughs> if between 20 and 24 definitely uh, dive in and have that checked for your recall recalls are part of the world now and just get used to them um, almost every news we have has got some kind of recall in it so um, but Kia is up to bat right now for that one you can obviously you know I don't want to get too detailed into this but uh, check it out if it was built uh, uh brake manually tell you rides after suddenly fully engaged at all times so there's your number right here that's what i'm looking for right here so call them or visit their recall page if you are concerned about this moving along from there uh toyota is benchmarking a ford maverick and a, a hyundai santa cruz so what that means is uh basically uh toyota has bought these Okay, they bought a Santa Cruz and they bought a Maverick and they are pulling them into their places, into Toyota, and they are going to reverse engineer things, pick and choose what they like, what they don't like, uh, and they are going to test their vehicles against it. And they are, but it, what it could possibly be is the fact that uh, Toyota is bringing out a compact truck like the Santa Cruz or the Maverick, which would be pretty cool. We heard rumors of the Stout coming and things like that, and uh, maybe that's what they're going to do some comparisons on, but uh, the big takeaway is that Toyota's got something up their sleeve about a small truck, and they bought a Santa Cruz, and they bought a Maverick to figure out what that's going to be and use some of the components or see how they want to compete against it. Uh, moving on from there, get this out of the way here. Uh, good news for buyers, bad news for borrowers of basically uh all we need to know is this stuff right here new vehicle supply in the u.s is just about up to pre-pandemic levels okay that's great uh we know inventory is low for honda and toyota uh, of course it is that's honda and toyota it, it is what it is uh, but uh, higher inventory levels are pushing a return to substantial discounts off the sticker price um and has always been offset by high interest rates the reserves the Federal Reserve is in a battle against post-pandemic inflation, but uh, this economist says, I am a believer we should start, should be cutting rates by three or four times. Hopefully that happens. They go through, give you some details on here. Here's an interesting couple of charts in here for you. EV sales, how fast they're climbing if you're interested. And then the other one is down here too. We saw uh, down here, this is uh, EV print transactions. Uh, uh, hybrids rising, uh, Jeeps dominates uh, plug-in hybrids. We knew that if you, if you don't know already, okay, of all the plug-in hybrid vehicles out there, Jeep Wrangler is the number one selling and has been for years. Okay, the, the Jeep Wrangler 4XE, that is by far, that is the number one selling plug-in hybrid SUV sold out there today. Um, but that's not what I wanted to show you. I want to show you right here. Uh, here's your uh, current from Cox Automotive. Okay, they do this stuff. You can go right to Cox Automotive and see this. But this is uh, uh, first quarter of 2024. This is days of supply 
per, per uh, manufacturer days of supply again quickly means that if they were to stop producing vehicles how many days before all their dealership networks ran out of vehicles okay so the more days of supply the more vehicles they have on hand <clears throat> you can see jeep ram and dodge always up here they always got the most that's a good thing for us because that means they can deal more we can get better deals on them it also means that jeep ram and dodge are not dealing with the same bs that a lot of companies are where they're uh can't get you know they got supplier issues part issues uh can't make cars in time can't do nothing they're like ford where they got you know 300,000 trucks sitting on a lot that you that are were built in 2022 and you may not get them till 2024 and all the bs stuff that goes on well uh jeep ram and uh, dodge they just uh they put theirs on a lot and they sell them and they sell them for negotiated prices and it's a great thing for us you can see ford has got uh where's ford at uh what is that 90 days of supply chevy is at uh, about 66 days of supply you can see what things are toyota is at 34 it looks like uh, Honda looks like they're at 45 so you can kind of see on here real quick on your chart where you think uh, they are as far as uh, supply use that to your advantage when you are looking to buy a new vehicle so uh, there you go um, Kia Land Rover blah 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 okay moving on from there um, this one right here uh, the Kia Tasman pickup truck it's been spotted testing I actually have a full video coming out on this truck so we're not going to spend a lot of time on it but uh, this truck is based on it, uh, again how we talked about here, how Toyota was benchmarking a Ford Maverick and a Honda Sa Hyundai Santa Cruz for their uh, new midsize or small compact pickup. Well, um, the Kia Tasman did the same thing with the Ford uh, Ranger Raptor, okay? They bought a Ranger Raptor, and they start reverse engineering things and seeing what they want to use and how they want to do it. And this new Kia Tasman, when it comes out, is going to have some serious potential. This is a pretty... Pretty interesting, pretty serious truck. Like I said, I got a full video coming out on it real soon for you. Uh, here, Detroit News, Ford pickup probe over transmission problems. This problem has been around for a while, and it's one that personally affected me, and it hit us hard, and it almost got us into an accident. But uh, Ford trucks on here, I think mine, this was on my 2011. Uh, my 09 F-150 caught on fire and burned to the ground. And then... Uh, I bought a 2010 for myself as a replacement for that when it burned up that next year. And then, uh, well, I had a 2011 and, uh, or the 2010 and we loved it. And then uh, we bought Tina a 2011 with the intention of me running high miles on mine. And then I would take hers over and she would get something else. But anyway, our 2011 had this problem with the transmission um, automatically just downshifts and it can lock the wheels up um, you know, right here, uh, alleged a truck can suddenly shift into a lower gear without warning. Often the rear end will lock up. Um, and we had this happen to us. Now, we had it repaired under warranty, and they did it and fixed it. And I don't remember what the deal was. Something about the uh, transmission shifting solenoids or something they said weren't tuned right or something. But we had it repaired, but we had this problem in our 2011. And uh, like I said, it ended up having Tina sliding down the road sideways. Um, you know, in town and uh, not, not a good thing. But anyway, they are diving into this again The for five, for over a half million pickup trucks. Uh, so, and they give you a year on here. Uh, basically, 2011 and 12s were recalled for the same problem in 2016. Uh, Ford later added 2013 models to the recall. Um, so it looks like it is still those uh, same basic trucks in there. But uh, like I said, something to consider anyway. Uh, investigation says the probe covers F-150s from 2014 model year. So anything after that. So anyway, something to keep in mind and be careful of. Like I said, it was a pretty scary situation for us too. Um, moving on from there, we got, uh, what is this one? Toyota is also... <laughs> Now, this one cracks me up. Now, if they're going to do this, they better be pulling something serious out of their hat. Because, um, you know, Ford Authority right here says that Toyota bought a Bronco Raptor. And they are benchmarking the 2025 Forerunner against it. Um, that's interesting. Okay, you know, we they got a lot of new vehicles we know coming out here. Uh, but uh, where did I see it? Uh uh, fresh off spottings, that's the Maverick one I was just telling you about. Uh, it seems that it's as if it's also taking a closer look at the high-performance Ford Bronco Raptor 
uh, which makes sense for a number of reasons. Toyota is most likely benchmarking the Raptor, not necessarily against the base 2025 Forerunner, but rather the more capable TRD or more likely the TRD Pro variant. <laughs> okay, so we're not going to stay on here for long, but uh, I promise you this. If Toyota is going to be trying to make a Forerunner TRD Pro anything like a Bronco Raptor R, um, they got a long way to go. They got a very long way to go. That's kind of like saying a new Toyota uh, Tacoma TRD Pro is going to be as good as a Raptor Ranger or a Colorado ZR2. It's, they're, or, it, it, compared to an R, that'd be like saying compared to a, a Colorado a ZR2 Bison. No chance. Toyota's got no chance on that. So, But the good news is hopefully Toyota does try because that means our TRD Pro variant might be a little better than what we get. Maybe we'd see a front locker. Maybe we'd see a four-wheel drive system that actually works and doesn't need to be in four low to use lockers. Maybe we'd see the suspension systems. Maybe we'd see a wider stance in it, uh, not just offset wheels, but actually longer uh, control arms for more uh, you know, articulation. Who knows? But anyway... Uh, Toyota bought a Raptor R, and uh, they apparently they are looking to do something or compare it to a uh, 2025 Forerunner TRD Pro. So good hopes for us that uh, maybe that Forerunner will have some serious potential. Will it be a Raptor R, a Bronco Raptor R? Uh, not a chance. There's no possible way, I promise you. But it might be better than what we are expecting it to be, and that's the good takeaway from here. Uh, moving on from there, we got uh, Colorado 2025 Chevy Colorado production is scheduled to start. When is it scheduled to start? Well, pretty interesting because those uh, the 2024 Colorados are just now starting to show up, you know, a, couple, a month or two ago, okay? So uh, we're already into the, you know, it's already coming into the second quarter of the year for the 2024s to get out. And they are saying that uh, production will begin on October 28th, 2024. So that means there's a possibility that by mid-November or even into, you know, so November, end of November, December time frame, you might be able to see uh, a 2025 Colorado, um, which if you waited until, if you just recently got your 2024, you know, a couple months from now, like I said, not too far away, you know, it's, I mean, this, these numbers are crazy how long it's taking people to get trucks out. This is even late. Okay, most production vehicles, most trucks before the pandemic, they were on dealer lots in the end of September or in beginning of October. Here, you're waiting all the way till technically almost November 1st for production to even begin. Um, like I said, I, I, it's, it's a shame that all these trucks come so late. We literally lose half of a year of ownership. Um, as far as resale value and things like that go, upsetting. Moving on, though, because we got to fly through the rest of these. Uh, many surveys say that trucks and SUVs are too big. Um, and you know what? I'm going to just quickly, mainly with this one, it's on auto blog. And if you type in any of this stuff on here, you can read this because it was very complicated to read. I'm not that interested in it, but it's not about me. It's just I get this stuff for you guys. Uh, but they say that they're too dangerous and they're too big. And they suck down too gas, much gas, and they're too dangerous to run people over with. Um, so you can read it if you want to. Uh, that's the world we live in today. But apparently it's uh, your truck's fault that people that are jaywalking get hit by them and they get hurt worse than they do if they get hit by a Prius. So the information is here for you if you want to read it. Um, it's all there. I Like I said, not too interested in myself, but thought I'd throw it in there real quick. Moving on from there. <coughs> this one here... Um, we yeah you know, the haunting car graveyards. <laughs> um, we've talked about this before. Ford has got thousands and thousands and thousands of F one fifties parked on all kinds of lots and in speedways and all this. Here is the Michigan International Speedway. It is just rows and rows of F one fifties. I ice internal combustion. You know regular gas ones and. Uh, uh ev the lightnings and stuff and they you know and everybody's speculating why and they come out and they say see so got people saying i think they're overpriced is what i think uh it could the people are like it could be cost related some people are saying uh, they could be sitting there because of chips uh I, some people are like i can't afford them but in ford's response 
According to a statement from Ford, the back lot of Detroit Metro Airport, the Kentucky Speedway and Michigan International Speedway have held new cars awaiting to hit sales lots. Well, then they need a new trucking company and they need to fire the one they got fast because there is no reason for thousands of vehicles to be stored on lots because you can't get them to dealers because you can't find truck drivers. Now, uh, right here, where was it? Where is it? I just saw the, the, the icing on the cake uh, right here. Thousands of trucks are in transit. We expect to ramp up shipments in the coming weeks. And we compete, or, or as we can complete through launch quality checks to ensure the F-150 truck meets high, high standards and delight customers. Okay, right there is a key thing. Um, here they're saying they're starting to ship and they've been shipping already. And uh, first new designs are in dealers in February. Thousands of trucks are in transit. Okay, they're saying. They're saying they're sitting here waiting to hit sales lots. And then here they say... Uh, Ramping up shipments in the coming weeks as we complete thorough launch quality checks. In other words, what it means is it means that all these trucks, thousands and thousands of Ford F-150s are sitting there because they have problems. They have problems that need to be fixed. This phrase that we just saw is that is uh, that is Ford speak for we have problems. And uh, so hopefully they get them sorted out so they can get them shipped out. But thousands of 150s sitting there waiting for uh, for quality checks, as they call them, which we really know what it means. Uh, Silverado High and Low Country brings Carolina Squat to custom truck segment. I am not a fan of this type of thing. I don't care for this. I see them all over down here in Georgia, and it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. However, with that said... I do love the fact that people are out there and they have pride of ownership in their vehicles. They're putting some money into them. They're customizing and making them their way and they're doing a lot of neat things with them. And I, I completely applaud that, even though I would never own a truck like this. But I do like the fact that GM, same thing, recognizing what people are doing and a creativity to it. And they are bringing out a model that is going to match that. Still legal in the sense that it's going to work within the laws and the requirements of how high and low your lift can be in the variations. Um, but they are coming out with one for that segment. It is a new model they're coming out with called the High and Low Country. Right here, Silverado High and Low Country. Um, and like I said, many of us won't really like it or be that interested in it. But again... It just says something about GM, you know, listening to its customers, paying attention to what they see and doing it. See, some critics characterize the Carolina squad as dangerous and a public menace. And, and like I said, I'm not a fan of it, but I definitely applaud, you know, pride of ownership in a vehicle and these guys seem to have it. The ones around here, they're immaculate, they're lit up, they got wheel lights, they, these these kids or whoever is doing it, they have pride of ownership in their vehicle, and I, I really respect that. Well, GM, here they are. You know what? We're going to make a custom model for you guys. Just goes to show GM, like I said, that attention to, to customers and to their following. I love it. Um, next one over here. Oh, God, we're already 18 minutes in. I am sorry. Uh, Ford Performance Ranger Raptor Assault School comes with the pickup price. Now, when you have a Ranger, whenever you buy a Raptor from Ford, Bronco Raptor, Ranger Raptor, whatever it is, or uh, uh, F-150 Raptor, you get to go, you get free to go, it's free for you to go to the Ford Raptor Training School. And uh, these happen all over the country. As a matter of fact, my buddy Barry over at SeaTech Reviews, now, if you haven't checked him out, check him out. He's been one of my best friends for the last, you know, almost 20 years. He's owned every version of Raptor there is, and this is the Raptor school. He is taking his brand new 2024 Raptor R truck that he's got. Uh, they are going to fly out, and uh, he's got that Raptor. Well, he's going to fly out and uh, go participate in this school here as well, too. Uh, he's going to get some video on it. So, again, if you want to see what this school entails, uh, check out C Tech Reviews. That's my buddy Barry, and uh, he will be going out there here in a couple of months for Raptor School uh, because he's bought that 2024 Raptor R. Uh, and uh, but it's cool that they actually offer that school for you to teach you how to off road that truck. I love that. That's pretty brilliant. Good job on Ford. Like I said, they've been doing it since the Raptor came out, but even now it is included with the Ranger 
Raptor, you get that same school. So that's awesome. Next one, last one. Uh, last year for the V8 Power Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392. We knew this was coming. They're going to be calling it the last edition or whatever they call it. Um, but it is going away and... Uh, but it will be worth a lot of money. Like I said, if you can get one of these things, it's going to be worth serious money afterwards. They even say right here, clearly we're talking about a collector item. Okay, This thing is going to be very good, very nice. But the big takeaway in this article, the reason I brought it up for you guys, is how it comes about. Okay, So how it's going to actually happen here is... Uh, Right here, the Jeep document states that dealers who exceed their sales targets from last month we will be allocated a single final edition of the 2024 Rubicon. Okay, so that means that's how you know what dealers are going to get them. Only the best dealers are going to, you know, get one of these to be able to sell. So this is likely to be a wide range of or wild ride for American dealers who may demand a higher price than MSRP. Obviously, we know that to be true. Now, this is here. It gets real interesting, okay? With the model likely being in great demand, dealers who receive one can expect to make a handsome profit through above MSRP or ADMs, okay? Look at here. Look at this line. This practice is prohibited in Canada with new vehicles. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? This practice of ADMs, dealer markups, market adjustments is prohibited in Canada. But here in the U.S., dealerships get away with it all the time and do whatever they want to. It's food for thought. Take it for what it's worth. We're already 20 minutes in on this one, so we're going to end it now. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, thanks for watching.